This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Pete and Sebastian Show. We're back, baby. Bro, got to say, Sebastian Maniscalco, of course, as always, on the other end here. Before we start this cast, you look... You're looking good, bro. You're looking. Uh, there's a glow to you, and uh, before it was handsome. There's a dare I say there's a sex appeal going on through my lens, bro. Uh, I'm glad you noticed. Yeah. Um, I'm glad you noticed because I'm doing something different. Really? Please, are we sharing the secret? I started juicing this week. Wow, um, you're glowing, bro. You're glowing from it. I, I got to tell you, I, not only do I feel fantastic, mentally I feel clear. I uh, also am using this Papa Barkley's CBD cream anti-aging on my face. I don't know if that's starting to kick in. Wow. I mean, you <laughs> said, that's what you sent to us for a Christmas gift, the Papa Barkley. Jackie has since purchased it two more times on her own. I bought it for my parents I mean, Papa Barkley, folks. We don't get paid for that. Am I recording? I just get so nervous, you know, bro. <laughs> don't. All right, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, now I gotta check. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you're so gonna I'm... you're gonna literally when the when the virus lifts and auditions kick in, you're gonna go in for your first uh, audition as in a major movie again as like the you know the sidekick, like the Viggo Morgason brother-in-law. Uh, you know, to, to, and then they're going to look at you and go, bro, you turned the table. We don't know what you've been doing with, in the quarantine, but you're leading <laughs> man time, leading man time. Well, I got to tell you, it all it all came to a, a head on Sunday for me. Uh, I'm the heaviest I've ever been. OK. Yeah, you would mention that. You don't look it, but. Well, it's uh, I, I, and I, and I don't feel good. I'm just I, I've been eating like like uh just like a slob and Fresh. the workouts yeah yeah it's pandemic, the workout, right? it's pandemic uh the, it, yeah I, i'm gonna blame it on the pandemic but i'm also gonna blame it on myself not having the mindset to get over this but it all came to a head on sunday by the way it was, it was lana's birthday on sunday right yes happy birthday now to her, of course 37 years old she uh she told me you know the, during the Mother's Day fiasco, I didn't step it up on Mother's Day. We had a, uh, I don't even know if I talked to you on this, about this. Didn't I, did I tell you about Mother's Day? No, I don't think so. On Mother's Day this year, I really didn't make it a good Mother's Day. This was in May. This was like, uh, I was deep into the, the, the depression of the pandemic. And I yeah. let I let I let Mother's Day kind of slip through the cracks. And that was on me. And, and she had mentioned, you know, wow, you know. I don't think Dan Frank celebrated Hanukkah in hiding either, bro. Don't beat yourself up. It was rough times. Everybody was taking everything off. <laughs> yeah, so so I took that to heart, and uh, I st- I got to tell you, I got to give myself a pat on the back here. Yeah, yeah. I tried to surprise my, my wife with a variety of different things and all of the surprises she found out about, okay? For her birthday? For her birthday. All right. And I noticed this now having a child that could put sentences together and speak. I had a large balloon bouquet put upstairs uh, the day before her birthday, and I was going to bring that down in the morning so I could surprise her with it. And, uh, of course, the, the night before, Serafina had seen the balloon. She's like, Mommy, there's balloons upstairs for you. Oh. Uh, it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't you, know, you let a kid see balloons that's like you know it's like an adult see an eight ball of cocaine on the kitchen table <laughs> i'd say you're gonna do it you're gonna make note of it all right so so uh she uh ruined that surprise um i had um the cake boss uh do you know the cake boss the guy that makes the cakes uh i know the show yeah which one so is he? Have, though? Is he got dark. I always, I only know the competition one. I don't know him for to say. Uh, I don't know the shows. I think his name's Buddy. Buddy All Valestro. Right. All right. All right. He, yeah, uh, 
he um we have a relationship he's made cakes for me in the past and uh i told him i wanted an amazon box cake because lana loves amazon right right? and but i want to step further with it and this is where my creativity kicked kicked in by by the way I, i have to give credit where credit's due my mother came up with the idea for the amazon box and then I ran with it. Yeah. You know the tape that goes over the uh, seal of the box, the yes. Amazon? It's like a tape. Yes. Oh, so yeah. It says Amazon throughout the tape. What I did is I put, instead of Amazon, I put everything that means a lot to Lana. Art, Caruso, Sebastian, Serafina, design. It was all across the tape, right? Nice, bro. Then for the label, what I did is I put her weight when she was born, 8.4 pounds. Her How length. Did you get that information? Her mother. Wow, that's a lot of leg work, bro. I got the length, how, how long she was when she was born, the time when she was born, and then for the address, I used the address of the, the house that she used to live at when she was born in Memphis, Tennessee. Nice, man. The tracking code was like a decoded, like, we wish you a happy birthday. And, but, but the way it was done was different letters, but it, you could make out what it said. And here's the kicker, bro. This <laughs> Two oh. things. There was a QR code on the label. Right, you know of, those, those of the code. cake. Yeah, you know the, the the code that you normally see on a on a on a package. Right. There's like a code. Well, you put your your phone over the code on the cake, and a video pops up of me and the kids wishing her a happy birthday. What? Well, when does the video pop Ooh. up? On her phone, like you you put your phone over the QR code on the cake. Come on. And and then a video pops up of me and the kids singing. Happy birthday to Oh, you. my oh, God. What a nice start. You can't, you can't eat that code, though. Yeah. D- they somehow made a code out of frosting that yeah. you could put your phone over, see a video, and then eat the code? <laughs> That's Willy Wonka shit, bro. That is Willy Wonka. That doesn't even make s- Bro, you got to be wrong about that. Come on. This is up there with whale eggs, dude. Bro, the, yeah, this... so 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 here's the cake, right? You can't see unless you're watching the video, folks. But if you're not, I don't know what you're doing, right? <laughs> so anyway, there's a code on it. You go like yeah. that, and I look, and then I can bite right in. That's <laughs> yeah. fucking insane, dude. That's insane. Yeah, it, 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 they told me about that. The cake people said we could do a QR code in a video or a photo pop up on her phone. And we could have it, you know, embedded into the cake. I go, my God. I go, yeah, sign me up for that. Then. Go ahead. <laughs> so so that is, that's like a Tom Cruise secret agent movie, right? Where he's got a <laughs> cupcake and then he's in hiding and he just look, puts his phone over it, gets the code, and then licks the cupcake and, and it's fucking gone? <laughs> that's, that's, that's. Bro, I cannot get past that, man. And you wanted to stall with my photo of a fat guy with no shirt on in the Walmart parking lot, which we'll get to. All right. So can we get the price on the cake? That's a, that's what I get from my wife sometimes with all these awesome stories like the uh, the whole cabana set up at the, at the beach. She's like, as a uh, listener, uh, we're dying sometimes for price. And I'm like, eh. I'll give you the price on that. Cabana set up for uh, the whole day, six hours. Including all the games, including the guy bringing you uh, the, the food is extra, but the whole setup yeah. six hundred bucks, six hundred. Wow. wow, that's worth it if you got a party of five, six people. Why not? Why not? I'm telling you, Cabana is the way to go. That's Beach Now, everybody. Beach Now. I'm promoting them. I uh, don't have any interest in the company, but uh, really good at what they do. But this cake, I cannot disclose the price. I'll tell you off air. Uh, there's. <laughs> No, I'm saying the cake is unbelievable. I don't really care about the price. But anyway, um she must she loved the now, cake, right? She was like, "Oh my gosh." Bro, she was blown away. Wow. I believe it. Blown away by the cake. But the it, the fun doesn't stop on the cake. You so, cut into the cake. You cut into the cake, right? Yeah. 
and out spills Captain Crunch, mimicking the packet, the, the the popcorn wrap that you would get in a in a in a in a box. Uh, yeah, the, the uh, Captain Crunch pours out of the. <laughs> that's. I mean, is it, that's wild. I get it. That's cool with the foam. But there is the other side. This beautiful cake's got, you know, white trash cereal in it a little bit, right? <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it does, it does kind of, like, screw with the taste. I wanted marshmallow. Marshmallow's going to melt, obviously. Yeah. Uh, marshmallows would be, like, you know, the ideal to get in that cake. But anyway. The kids probably loved it. That's a, I mean, the cake went up in taste for a kid. Oh God, yeah! It, the, the kids were blown away, and, and this is how I feel about a birthday cake at this point. Yeah. Now, birthday cake comes out normal birthday cake, right? Yeah. And I I I understand that you know these cakes aren't are probably uh, out of people's budget sometimes, which I totally understand. I get it. But you can make some of this stuff at home, bro. I, I, I've got amazing photos that people showed me of their homemade Amazon box cake that they made, and it looks great, right? Yeah, yeah. So here's my take on cakes. At this point in life, 2020, if you bring out a normal cake, just a circle cake, and put a candle in it, yeah. you blow it out, nice. that's it. yeah. You bring out a cake with a theme, you're talking about the cake for three days after that, right? I, the people, I, the, the, bro, the people at the party are talking about the cake. Like, if you were at my house and that cake came out and you saw what it did, it would be a conversation for the next hour on the cake, right? I, a whole hour on the cake? Uh, you know, it's like, I feel like a lot of times they're still talking about the cake because they feel like if they don't talk about the cake, you're going to, you're going to be offended that we're already beyond the cake. I, 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 bro, I, I, I bro, we're, what? we're 13, we're 13 minutes in right now on the cake. I can't wait to get off this cake guy. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, you've been pushing the cake right out of the gate. I mean, after the, after the, the Captain Crunch, it's like, where are we going? We're done with this fucking cake. <laughs> oh god! I mean, I, I, I listen. I, I've seen some really cool cakes. Never, I, I've never heard of a cake as cool as yours, truly. But I've seen, like, I was just at a party recently, and they had uh, a picture of the guy from when he was in World War II and the cake, and it was great. But it was like uh, every every time I took a step one way or the other, people going, "Did you see the cake? Did you see the cake? <laughs> Holy shit! Thank God they brought the cake. What would we have talked about?" So. <laughs> You know, by the way, Jackie's going to be a 50th next year. And, I, I mean, I, I can't even top Lana's 37th when you motor over here. That's just shit. <laughs> oh, no, no, that is so, that was unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. So, so, so we, we did that. Yeah, you did that. Then my buddy Dom, who's a chef, I told him, why don't you come on over? This was going to be a surprise. I said, why don't you come on over, make a nice meal for us. And we were going to have it. I got like a little roof deck up on the, on the house, kind of overlooking the mountains, right? So I, I told him, bring a nice table, two nice chairs. I got some nice lavender roses for the centerpiece. And we had dinner up on the roof. Uh, it was 98 degrees. I mean, it's been like 117 degrees out here, right? Uh, yeah. So it got a little hot so after after the entree we we kind of went in and had dessert downstairs but from from front to back from the balloons to the cake to the dinner was i, I got to tell you one of my best performances uh yeah. for a birthday that that I've had up to this point it, it's it sounds amazing and i got to ask you i saw a photo of you and Lana, it was uh, Instagram, I believe you had it on. You said, happy birthday to my wife, beautiful night dinner. And you were in a t-shirt, a cool t-shirt, but some. So was that your house? Yeah. Oh, because the way, I, I thought you were at a, literally at like some five-star restaurant, dude. Hmm. You, how many nook and crannies <laughs> do you got on this property? I mean, every time you're in a new location on your own property, I feel I, th I thought you were on another trip somewhere. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I, I got to tell you, because me and Jackie watch, uh, sadly, one of my favorite shows, believe it or not, is the real estate millionaire listings in L.A., right? Because the homes yeah. are so fun to watch. And, you know, the characters on the show, I like it a lot. Uh, do you ever watch that show, by the way? I've watched similar shows. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, one guy drives me nuts. As, well, anyway, the point is, some of these homes I'm seeing, and then they get the price tag, and it's like, you know, not even as much as your home, which I only know from public record. I can't wait to see it. It's just, it, listen, you're not going to save by your own house, but it's stunning. And it's like, yeah, that looked, I literally thought you were at some restaurant, man. Unbelievable. <laughs> so what a night, dude. What a so night. It was great. It was great. It was one of the best nights we've had during quarantine. Is there a birthday gift? I don't need to know it, but is there an actual birthday gift on top of all this? Because as we get older, it seems like, like you said, your wife gets Amazon every day. We can all get each other whatever we want. Are we still doing hard, you know, full on uh, birthday gifts? She got some items, some clothing. All right. Items. All right. So, um, yeah, okay. But I mean, it's it, it's more of the experience at this age. I agree with you. It's more like, okay, you could go and buy a dress. You could go buy some shoes, or jewelry. I, you know, I like buying her jewelry every every now and then. But at this point, for us, at least for me, and I, and I could speak for her as well. I think it's more experience driven gifts, whether it be you know doing a a, a nice meal at the house or yeah. you know what she did for my birthday was you know made it a, a taco we wanted to go to mexico so she brought mexico to the house right, right. you know i i think it's more that's where we're kind of living in in, in though especially now with quarantine and after quarantine i mean i think people now and, and you've read it in the news people are looking for homes especially in new york city now you see a lot of people exiting new york city because they're like Hey, if I'm going to work from home and, and I'm going to be at home more often, why am I going to be living in a box in the sky, right? Exactly. Why don't I get get some grass, get some lawn, make my home not only a home but also a where I could do business and what have you. So, um, yeah, man, it was it was great, and, and which leads me to my next topic, and we'll get to the Walmart thing. I just didn't know we were, we were going to get into this. Um, I'm doing a jailbreak, bro. What are you what are you talking about? You're leaving your uh, apartment, your house, I mean? Um, yeah, I think uh we're planning on maybe uh next month uh hitting North Carolina. Oh, the uh the, the family compound, the house up yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna go, I think. Uh I, I, I I've determined I'm not gonna let this thing rule my life and uh I gotta get out. I need a change of scenery. Of course I told my mother this, she goes you got a beautiful house. Where are you going to go? I go, Ma, I, you know, listen, you can only go to Disneyland so many times. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, you got to get out. You got no matter where you live and what you're living in, you got to get out yeah. and, and just see something else for a little while. Yeah, so I think we're going to do that. Um, let me skip ahead here to your um, to your Walmart photo you sent me before the show started. Oh, a yeah. A photo of yeah. a guy outside his vehicle. With his shirt off, uh, I don't even want to call it a beer belly. It would give it too much credit. Uh, this thing looked like um, he was gonna he was gonna pass away soon. Right, right. I, that's the, we've talked about that before. You see a guy like that, right, and you yeah. go, "There's no way I'm dying if he's not dead." Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, there's no way. It's impossible. <laughs> so. So uh, you you already want to get into it because I'm going to show the photo, but you got something to ask already because there's a, there's a reason. No, I said no, that. I want, I, I, yeah, I want you. I want. All right, I want that was reason. a double photo. That was in Walmart parking lot on Labor Day. All right, that fat guy, I gave him the benefit of the doubt. He had no shirt on and he was like letting the sun hit him. I went in, got what I needed, came out about 20 minutes later. He was still out doing this so now you're officially you're fucking tanning in the walmart parking lot you're tanning in the walmart and did you see what's in the background that's a double photo <laughs> did you do a full scrolling on it you see that is that woman in a in, in a nightgown uh did you think again come on bro you know what that is right there that's a that's a female amish person that's an amish woman Loading a vehicle with groceries in a Walmart. Only one pulled out, drove away. I mean, sinning. Sinning on... I mean, 
What? Do, why even bother wearing the costume if you're pulling in in a, in a, in a fucking station wagon and getting right? You may as well just throw in a pair of Wranglers, lady. This is a joke, right? Now, do you think? Do you think she goes to the to the store with a car, and then comes back, parks the car like eight blocks away from the house, gets on a horse, and then horses it in? I do. I think she's got, because, you know, the Amish live in and around regular people, so I wouldn't be surprised if that's a regular person, friend of hers, car. She's like, listen, I'm going to horse and carriage it down to your house. Then I'm going to <laughs> get your fucking Datsun, and I'm going to go get my groceries. And then I'm going to bring your car back and get back to my horse. All right? So, yeah, I mean, this is like, bro, that would be no different than me, like, uh, stabbing somebody while I'm uh, kissing my my, my uh, mother Mary on my neck. <laughs> but, but I, listen, no disrespect to the Amish, but don't you, don't the kids, if the kids are in a horse and buggy and they see a car go by 55 miles an hour, don't they go to the mom and dad? Why don't we get one of those? It's it's I, it's unbelievable, <laughs> right? And now what? You, now take that another level. You got the kid on the horse and carriage with dad. And the car goes by, and they go, "Was that mom? <laughs> the fuck! <laughs> Why are we even bothering? They, not even the whole nucleus family is sticking to this shit." <laughs> <laughs> what <is> that? <laughs> What's that, mom? <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, oh my god bro oh uh, what uh, what the hell the, the parking lot looked vacant what the hell were you doing at, at walmart on labor day oh, oh, oh i had to pick up uh i had to pick up my my nick and rec gum sadly but i do a uh pandemic time now they only have one side of the walmart open they usually have both sides open so you can only get it so it's annoying trying to park close so i park way back Towards the end, that's where you see all the riffraff, man. <laughs> Getting out of their cars. That's where you see them. If you do a slow drive through the back part of Walmart, like, you know, not back part, but furthest yeah. away from the doors, that's where you see them eating sandwiches in their car and shit. <laughs> Fucking, <laughs> oh, I mean, you know. They only move around from spot to spot, so you don't realize they're living in the fucking parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I think that's true about any large parking lot. In the in the back of the parking lot, you always got some car, you know, uh, you know, in from the eighties, backed into a spot. <laughs> yeah, ba backed in. As he knows, he's gonna have to pull out real fast at any given moment, right? Anytime, anytime you're backing in, guy. What's that about? <laughs> oh, that is a call from the mid '80s. Back to the... oh god, and it makes you as you're parking, right? You look at it, you oh. go, "What the fuck is going on over there?" <laughs> it's always backed in. And and it's under a tree, and you're always you're right. You're always like, oh no, what is this guy? And then, and then the car, it, it's just just a lot. Trunk popped constantly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they don't even work at the store. That's what even, no. you know. If you see at least the uniform on, you're like, oh, they do a deep lunch. Yeah. <laughs> That's the deep lunch when you get out and you go way to the end of the parking lot, sit in your car all angry that you're working there. <laughs> oh, I love that lunch. Oh, oh bro, that, that that you're you're one step away from taking that car home on that lunch. <laughs> yeah, right, no shit. No shit. Oh, oh god. <coughs> oh my god so so what what were you doing there oh uh, the nicorette the, I the told nicorette. You, yeah the nicorette. listen i gotta yeah. i gotta switch gears up real quick before i yeah. to tell you this because uh this is embarrassing to even bring up because i know how you're gonna feel about it but jackie said i could bring it up to you we have to have a discussion about this so as you know she runs a lot right all the time and she's got this running partner that uh, they run together a lot because they the other one does a lot of marathons. Jackie's done a couple now, and they go long distance some, a lot of times. So, obviously, during the summer, they run outside. And, like, this past Sunday, for example, 
They went particularly far. They were feeling good. They did 20, right? And they just 20 go. 20 miles. 20 miles. 20 miles. 20 miles, right? Now, let me, let me stop here. Are this yeah. the type of run, if they do 20 miles, are they the type of runners who chit-chat during the run? Like, are they talking and – or is it just solid 20 miles? It's 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 a, a, a little of both, you know? It depends because when they train, certain times they're supposed to run certain miles slower and then certain ones, you know, maybe kick it in. So when they're running a little slower, yeah, they chat. But I don't I don't think it's like – and then Fran said – and then, you know, yeah. I don't – I think it's like uh, there are lots of moments where they're just kicking it, like let's get down this road, and, you know. So yeah. – so uh, and they do it mostly in our neighborhood and one one town over. But um, you know it's hot and uh, they don't like to carry around a lot of water. So what they'll do is like Jackie's parents live a town over. They'll usually hit that her house, get some water. Uh, the other runners' parents live in a town and uh, not too far away. You know, so stuff like that. But sometimes, like Sunday, they're really thirsty and they have to be going particularly far. And uh, Jackie's like, we found the house where nobody was home. And I saw the hose, so we followed the hose, and uh, we, we turned it on in the backyard, and we drank out of their garden hose, right? So I was like, all right. And she goes, but we were so thirsty. I was just looking for anyone to be out, and we were just going to be like, how are your garden hose? And I go, what? I go, if somebody you saw was out, you were going to say that some random person's house, I'm sorry, do you mind if we just grab a quick thing out of your a swig out of your garden hose? We're just dying because you know clearly they're running and it's hot. And she's like, "Yeah, what's the big deal?" I'm like, first, bro, I, I'll just let you go." I mean, are we serious? I mean, first of all, if you're the homeowner, right? Let's just say you you just you're doing your hedges, you're doing a little clip on your hedges, right? Two young ladies, not young ladies, regular you know normal ladies, attractive ladies come by, clearly training, and. Uh, your garden, your hose is out there. It's clearly visible. And one of them, excuse me, we're dying. Would you mind if we just drank out of your garden hose? What do you say? Go, go ahead. Right. Yeah. Now, that's it? You, you I feel now, I feel if I'm the homeowner, that's an obligation for me to go inside and get you a proper glass of water. You, Oh no no no! No, no well, not no. you, bro. You 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 you. you. <laughs> Even your texts to me. I wish I call you. Yeah, how you doing? Good. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Rocky. Yeah, yeah. The Rocky's <laughs> way more sensitive than you, bro. <laughs> I think okay. I, I think uh, it's you gotta if it's two women, obviously running. Non-threatening, right? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Go take a swig, right? Mm -hmm. No problem. If it's the guy from the back of the Walmart parking lot. So what if it's a guy? What if it's just a guy like that walking by and he goes, "Gosh, I've been walking far. Uh, yeah, yeah. You mind if I grab a swig out of your garden hose? Keep it going, guy." <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> what? Why are you gonna? Are you gonna? Are you gonna give that guy a, a drink of water? Uh, there's, there's, uh, uh, come uh, on, uh, man. There's a there's a couple clues here. Yeah. If someone goes, man, I've been walking for a while. That's a tip off number one. <laughs> there's a, there's a, <laughs> in this day and age, who's walking for a while? <laughs> right? The, the, <laughs> <laughs> if you if you can't even if you're not even taking the bus, then yeah, I hear yeah, you. Yeah, all right, not right out of the gate, that's the problem. If you've been walking that long to work to work to work up a thirst, it's gonna kill you, the guy. Even what if he's in a sweatsuit? You know, like uh, I don't give a shit what he is. All right, keep and, it and, moving, guy. Not and, this house. And what about the fact that um. I, I was saying this to Jackie. I feel like there's a little bit like, uh, you know, there's men out there that would be like, oh, yeah, you know, Pete's wife. Yeah, yeah. Just drank out of my hose, my garden hose one time. It's like. It's, wait, 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 wait. I, I lost you. What, what, what are you talking I'm about? saying like, what if there's a man that they use the garden hose of this man, right? Like you. 
And then down the line, maybe you're in a bar or something, my name comes up, and they're like, hey, do you know Pete Corielli? And, and, and you'd be like, oh, I never met him, but yeah, his wife drank out of my garden hose one time. Right? No? I or, don't see the problem. I don't see the problem. All right, if you don't see the problem, then there's no problem, because you usually have more of a problem with shit than me. I just found it a little uh, 1970-ish. That's what I appreciate. I appreciate someone going, hey, you know, let me get a swig of water. I'm I'm parched here. I've been running. And it's like she's been running two miles. This one's on a 10, 10 12-mile uh, run, and she's dying for water. I like that she did a 70s hose job and then kept it moving. Uh, and, and you, by no means, as the homeowner, should be obligated to go in and get a bottle of water because that turns into a conversation, right? Because then you go, oh, yeah, you're going to, and then you got to go, so... Where are you running? You know, from ah, uh, we run every, and then you got to hear the story, right? That's true. That's true. And they don't want that either. Not only does the homeowner not want that, the runners don't want that. You got a good yeah. point. All right. So there we go. You know, another life lesson on the cast. It's okay. See, but yeah, you throw me off here though, because like you, you wouldn't know that they ran twenty unless I told you, right? And and and, and then you're telling me if another guy comes by overweight in a sweatsuit walking, he don't get the water. It's all very subjective, bro. Bro, I'm telling you, it's all on visual presentation, okay? Yeah. Two girls in shorts running. Guy, guy eh, he's been walking for a while. It depends. You got to look at to see. You got to see the demeanor. You got to see the behavior. You have to see the nonverbals. You have to look into his eyes, see if there's any type of drug usage or whatnot. Uh, you, 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 you give the hose to the wrong guy. That guy take the hose and wrap it around your neck and, and then take take the hedger and put it right through your heart, right? A, you got to go. Yeah. <laughs> and, my hose is in the backyard, too. So I take him to my hose. He'd be looking around and go, oh, this is fantastic. No one's going to see this shit. <laughs> yeah. And then there's the story where Jackie's got to give to the newspaper. What happened? What happened to your husband? I don't know. He was out gardening. <laughs> and then he let somebody use the hose. <laughs> he let us. <laughs> that's it, bro. Especially during these times, huh? My God. Oh, my you could God. literally now in any major city take your wife or girlfriend on a late night romantic fire walk. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> hey, after dinner, you want to go walk down and see the fires? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tourist attraction. <laughs> oh God! Oh my God! It's unbelievable. So, so what happened? Yeah. we're up sixty now. People aren't telling people about this cast, man. No, oh, we jumped up and we jumped back. Um, I'm kind of getting into podcasts now. I'm, uh, I'm I've been tapping into Joe Rogan. He had Tyson on. Mike Tyson, he's going to be fighting Roy Jones Jr. November 28th for charity. And uh, I highly recommend people go take a listen to that, especially the first part of it. Tyson's talking about kind of coming back and the mindset you got to be in to be a fighter and what it takes to train. And, and uh, he's in the best shape of his life. He's like 53, 54 years old. This is what kind of spawned my uh, rebirth of health with this juicing and trying to get myself back into shape. So just just a sidebar on that. The, no, the, this the, is, bro, this is a good way to up the ratings, bro. You listen to Rogan and then do a recap of Rogan on our cast. It's like, <laughs> how will you, you get Rogan's cast and our cast all in one channel? <laughs> is that illegal? I don't even know if that's illegal. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> No, yeah, so, I know. That's that's the that's what's so uh, amazing, right? Because then tomorrow Rogan could have on uh, some guy that's uh, building a ship to Mars. I mean, right? It's like it, all these eclectic different guests. Yeah, man, this guy's got a lot of different people. Plus, he just moved to a beautiful new studio out in Austin, Texas. If you got a chance, you should take a look at uh, the Joe Rogan podcast to check out his new studio. But I also wanted to get into, uh, I went on a hike the other day alone. Normally I go with Lana. It's a 4.2-mile hike uh, throughout the uh, throughout the mountains. And um, as I'm going on the hike, and I want to pick your brain on this, um, I'm walking down a hill, 
and a deer pops out of the woods, and he's about 20 feet from me. Beautiful. So, so we both basically shocked each other. Like, he didn't see me coming. I didn't see him coming. He looked at me. Now, I thought deer were afraid of people, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, isn't isn't that the general assumption that deer, yeah. that's why they're so hard to, to shoot Absolutely. or whatever, right? They got quick, quick. So this thing is looking at me. He's like mean mugging me. And I'm like, I'm petrified. I'm like, is this thing going to? Is this thing gonna oh, attack wow. me? Okay. <laughs> yeah. And then it 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 darts off. I start walking again. Another one pops out. Right. And again, this one's looking at me. I'm looking at him. He goes right. Two more steps. Another one pops out, bro. <laughs> Whoa, man. Three deer. Here's my question. If a deer jumps at you, you think you'd be able to fight a deer off? Well, let me think about this now. That means he's coming at me, lifting up on his hind legs and kicking at me with his front legs. Yeah, he just he just came at you and he, he just leaped and, and basically thrusted you with his two hoofs right to the chest, knocking you back. Now he's on top of you. Do you think... You now obviously you can't outrun a deer, but right. what I'm saying, bare fisted, do you think you could get this thing, this, get this thing off you? Oh, man, is it a, if we, if it's a if it's a buck, I might, I definitely would lose. But a, a female, man, I think I think one of those hoofs coming down on you's got to be like a Louisville <laughs> Slugger to the fucking <laughs> collarbone, right? I mean, shit. <laughs> And they got, the, it's like just someone with two bats, boom, 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 fucking wailing on you. And then doing a deep dig with the fucking, no. I don't know. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I could not do it. So now I'm thinking, I'm thinking. And, and you, you don't, you don't want to be the one getting beat up like that. All it takes is one deer to beat up one of us. And then he goes back to the other deer and goes, we, we could take these motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> we don't gotta run no more. This is like, right? <laughs> we've been running. We've been running all this time. Who knew they were so weak? <laughs> oh shit! This is the William Wallace of Diaz, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> oh shit! So, so anyway, what's so? What, so what happened what, here? What did? Well, and then that one scooted off. So. It, it, what's what's and we've seen these deer before, not quite this close. It's a family, right? They just had these, you know, two newborns. Now they're growing up, but my fear was the mother, you know, protects the kin. So I was thinking maybe, you know, oh, uh, I I was looked at it as a threat, and she's gonna fight off a threat because she's with her family, right? So I was just trying to figure out what to do. Uh, just in case. So, which brings me to my next, my next point. I want to get your your take on this. Um, generally speaking, I carry a bottle of water with me while I take a hike. Uh, what do you think of this? Buying a backpack and basically putting water, mace, first aid uh, on a hike, just in case rattlesnake, bear, what have you. <laughs> I'm prepared, like a, a Shingetti. Uh, right. <laughs> well, you, are you doing deep hiking, or are you always like uh, within cell phone reception? And uh... yeah, no, I, there, there's reception with the cell phone, but I'm talking about in that particular instance, right? If right. I feel threatened, whether it be a coyote, like one time we saw a coyote, we had to turn around, right? Yeah. What if you know? But if I got like bear bear mace or whatever I got in the bag. My whole point is, do you think I should be carrying a Something. small backpack on my back during a hike? Or if you were hiking and you saw a guy with a backpack, would you go, guy, hey, we, we ain't we ain't uh we ain't going up uh uh <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> what, what do you what do you need? A Sherpa? We're not this is, this is... <laughs> no doubt, bro. I would think that. 
I would think you're uh, this is your first rodeo. I mean, come on, man. The only thing maybe is I saw a commercial actually yesterday for this thing. It's like about the size of a, a handle. And it's a wand that you just turn it and it opens up to a long stick and it can smash through brick. But even that, yeah. dude. I mean, what do you get? You're going to have a coyote come at you and look at Lana and go, give me the stick thing. You know? <laughs> it's like, if you get bit by a rattlesnake, are you literally going to get out the kit? Or are you, <laughs> you going to fucking dial 911 and be like, I get, get a fucking medic out here immediately? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Can you imagine getting bit by a rattlesnake and looking at your wife and going, give me the kit. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Oh, do we got some Band-Aids in there? <laughs> nah, yeah, you don't need any of that stuff, man. Oh, my God. Yeah, we. Uh, I was speaking of wildlife. I was at my father-in-law's uh, yesterday for uh, Monday for Labor Day, and uh, he pulled out a pellet gun, and he was telling me, uh, he goes, I already got six so far this year, uh, squirrels, right? And he goes, because there's a black one, and he and I go, what you? I go, what are you shooting with? Like a BB gun is, or and he goes, no, a pellet gun. It's stronger than a BB gun. And he goes, yeah, I'll get it. There's there's one over there, but. The, the squirrel never came close enough. And then when it finally started to, Sadie came around the bend with our new little dog. So he, he he's like, I ah, will do this some other time. But he goes, I got sick so far this year. He goes, he makes fucking stew with the squirrels. Really? Uh, yeah. And he goes, it's delicious. And he goes, uh, I made a stew once. He goes, then I got a couple more after that. And he goes, I just throw them out in the field and the, and the uh, coyotes or whatever get them by morning, right? So... My question is, I, I was kind of glad that the squirrel never came close enough because I don't think I, as far as I can recall, I was ever a live witness to any animal being shot. I don't yeah, think I've yeah. ever actually seen it live. Um, but he was telling me I can get a pellet gun at a store called Cabela's. I got a lot of squirrels here. And in my backyard, I've thrown dead birds, and by morning, they're gone. So there are stuff that comes in. Is it cruel of me? Do you think? Because my father-in-law's like, there's just too many. They, they, they're, they're all over the place. I thin out the herd every year. I get like ten to fifteen of them. Uh, I'm thinking about doing that because I can't. I can't take it. Every time I turn around, the squirrels, the dog barks like crazy every time it sees one. Is that cruel? I'm not making a uh, stew though. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, there's there's quite a few squirrels on our end here. I I don't know. I'm not a proponent of like picking off animals just for the I mean, I mean, listen, I, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, not, I'm not looking forward to it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying, you know, we we had the raccoon, raccoons, the possums that were tearing up the yard, right? Uh, and we we captured them in a in a in a cage and then had them removed. Uh, didn't That's kill them. You live in bouncy California. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if your governor was looking with binoculars at your house making sure, okay, yeah, they're letting it go peacefully. Fuck that. <laughs> Although, I, mean, I don't know what I got on my property, uh, but there was a squirrel. It looked like it was drunk. It came out of the bushes, and, and it was doing circles on my drive. <laughs> 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 I, I don't know if I got bad... Uh, Nuts on the property or what? Right. But, 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 and and Seraphine, now here, here's a question uh, for you, and, and, I, and I'll get back to your question. But just a side note. Yeah. Sadie's there, the squirrel, whatnot. Now, does Sadie know at this age, like the difference in, like, uh, does she know about death? Like, if you. If you kill a fly, do you go, we killed it, or do you go, it's sleeping? No, yeah, we go, we go, well, it depends. When it's that small, like a bug or something, we go, it's dead, we got it. But a bird, we say, is in heaven. <laughs> but the <laughs> bug is just dead. So it depends on the cuteness level. But, yeah, she, I've, I've mentioned to her, <coughs> excuse me, that I want to kill them. I have a slingshot. I go, I want to try and get some of the squirrels. Dad, you're not killing squirrels, Dad. 
So, but she's in school now. So I would do it now while she's in school. I'd get a few of them. Hey, yeah, I mean, try it. I mean, if they're that that much of a problem, and you're trying to, uh, yeah, I mean, see see how you feel. You know, I've like, never killed an animal, man. I've I've killed a a mouse, like I've said, a mouse trap, but that's about it. Have you ever killed an animal? No, I I haven't killed anything. I, I changes a man. Changes a man. I think. I think if you're hunting for food, I could see it. You know, it's just my my buddy. Uh, John is very into hunting and he really careful about and really respects the animal and, and how he, how he, uh, you know, what do they call it when you kill it? And then you have to like, uh, you know, cut the meat and yeah, the heart. Butcher it. And, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So he's very delicate with it and whatnot. I, I, I think that I could see more than, uh, the squirrel is, uh, is, uh, the the dog barks every time he sees a squirrel. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how that goes over in court. Uh, you know, why'd you kill the squirrel? <laughs> this dog's giving me a goddamn headache. Well, listen, another animal is gonna eat the dead squirrel, so I'm not eating it, but but I'm leaving it out in the backyard for something else to feed, so it is nature taking its course with a Cabela pellet in the heart. <laughs> <laughs> so Do you think with uh, well for two questions. Number yeah. one, does that does do squirrels get hunted generally by other animals? Like are hawks eating squirrels? I wanna find out again yes. if we had I oh, saw they, that they in do. my backyard once. I saw a hawk had a squirrel pinned down, and he was holding it down till it ran out of life. It was unbelievable. And then he dragged it away and pecked at okay. it on my neighbor's lawn for hours. Okay, so do you think if a dead squirrel is found on the Corielli property and a hawk comes down to eat it, right? Right. Do you think the hawk's eating the squirrel, and then he catches a little pellet, and he's like... Pff, pff. <laughs> the hell is that like do you think they know do you think they notice the pellet or do you like, think they just <laughs> that's fascinating does it go i I've, I've never tasted that in a squirrel before what the <laughs> fuck is that little thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh man i don't know i don't know so hey i don't know if i got it in me but we'll find out we'll find out um yeah let me know if you uh is that how you're going to do it, though, slingshot? No, I've been practicing with the slingshot on, on my barbecue in the backyard, my charcoal barbecue, trying to hit it from a distance. It's really hard, man. I mean, you got to be an Indian with nothing else to do for a long time <laughs> to learn how to do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean shit. <laughs> so how is, uh, how is the school for Sadie? Anybody... Got COVID. What? What's the? T today is was her first day. So um, what's even fascinating at my school? So I told you they only have first and second grade is going full time, and um, some of the kids that are in second grade, let's say they got a brother and sister in third or fourth. A lot of times the parents are like, "Well, why? May as well just have them all do it from home." If I'm gonna, you know, why? Right. So Sadie's class has nine people and two teachers. And it's her teacher from last year, so it's just the best setup for her. But they even have the buses running. So Jackie said, I'm going to take her for the first couple of weeks at least. But the bus stopped in front of our house uh, just to see if maybe there was a kid running late. Uh, and I was looking at it through the window, and uh, not a single kid was on the bus, man. Not one kid. So there are kids going to school, but they're being everyone's being driven. So today's the first day. She's excited. We're excited. She's been home for six months, dude. I mean, That's shit. Unbelievable. Yeah, we got. I got to tell you a quick story. I'm cutting you off. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Um, so we got we Sadie's got her piano coach retired. It was an older lady. It was real nice. So this um, Asian woman, young Asian woman, um, who graduated from the college here or teaches at the Fredonia College. She does private lessons, but you got to be, you don't have to be good, but you have to be serious about it. So she wants to hear you play. So a couple of weeks back, Sadie's got to play for her on like a video. And the lady sits there and, you know, from your house. And when they're done, the lady goes, 
She plays, I'd love to work with her. She plays quite well for a 10 year old. And I really think we can do some special stuff together. Right. And then Jackie goes, she just turned seven. And then the lady goes, she's seven. Um, And Jackie goes, yeah. And she goes, okay. All right. Well, you guys are going to need to get a better piano, first of all, because right now the keys aren't. And all of a sudden she took it to a whole new level. And she's, and she's like this kid, she goes, I haven't seen a lot of kids play piano that well at that age. Right. So then we got to sit down with the kid and say, is this happening? Are you going to keep doing this? And Jackie's like, it doesn't matter. I'm going to make her do it till she's 18. So that's that. 45 minutes a day, bro. I leave the house sometimes because of the fighting. I can't take it, you know? And then there's other days where there's no fighting, but every day she's got to play. So we go piano shopping. And we go to two places the other day, right? Baby grands and shit. We're not getting any of that. We're going to get like a nice, we got some good research from a guy. And uh, first place we go, obviously, they got the masks on. I get it, right? But they have a little card on every piano that says, please don't touch. It was sanitized, right? right? So every time Sadie wanted to try one, the lady was like, okay, you sure this is one you want to try? And I mean, Jackie, you're like, at least, like, so you could sit back on your fat ass, lady? There's no one in here. Get out the Windex when we leave. <laughs> These things are six, seven grand each. I should be able to rub my dick on it. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm getting so pissed off. I go to Jack. Is there another piano place? I do not want to give this bitch on business, right? And Jackie was right there with me, right? She's like, what is she doing? She's not even doing anything, right? <laughs> so then we find another piano joint, right? Oh, and then the lady wanted 400 for delivery. And 300 to take away this shit piano we have. It's a big mama over here we got for free, right? It took four men to help me get it in. So we go to this another piano place, right? We walk in right away. The guy, Jackie's like, can we play any piano? The guy's like, they've all been sanitized. Play any one you want. Right? Boom. Already like this guy. We start talking to him. We end up buying like a really nice piano for Sadie. We're going to take this to a new level, man. We're going for it, right? So now... The guy, this guy's so cool. He waves the delivery and he and he says, "I'll take away your old piano." And he goes, "I got five in the back. I'll just add it to the fifth. I, I get a truck. I take them all to the transfer station at some point." And Jackie goes, "Oh, that's great. Um, saves him some work." And the guy's like, "Why? What were you gonna do?" And I look at the guy and I go, I "Wasn't gonna do this, but my wife. Are you ready for this?" I said to the guy, I "Go. She wanted me to, to burn the fucking piano in the backyard. That's what Jackie said, <laughs> right, bro?" We're not poor, we're not rich, but we're fine. We're fine. And Jackie's got this old mentality, old school mentality. I go, I'm not burning the fucking beer. And she goes, well, you just cut it up into pieces, and then you sit back there one day and you burn it, right? And the guy goes, you could have died. I go, what? <laughs> <laughs> he goes, bro. I go, what do you mean I could have? He go, I go, what do you mean, from the chemicals in the wood? And he goes, chemicals in the wood? He goes, a piano has over 1,200 pounds of string pressure. If you start burning that, one of those strings could pop off and slice your fucking hand off. And, 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 and those things would be whipping off. And then he goes, and he goes, and even if you do burn it, he goes, after you're done burning it, you, you couldn't pay me enough money to go within 30 feet of that fucking thing. Because they're still gonna pop off now that it's all burnt out. <laughs> Holy shit! She wanted me to save three hundred dollars, bro. <laughs> I could have died. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> so then I say to him, I go, listen, the guy who's repaired my piano in the past, he's telling me that my piano keys are made of ivory. I go, they're killing uh, rhinos for that shit. I go, should I at least take off the ivory and sell the ivory to, to the Chinese? And they fucking mush it up and they drink it and then they fuck. <laughs> and he goes, there's not enough ivory, bro. They just put a coating of ivory over every key. You'd be wasting your time. It wouldn't even be worth the work. So... <laughs> Thank God, oh dude, God. I almost died. Oh, God. <laughs> How white trash is that? Burn a fucking piano in the backyard. We got a quarter of an acre, bro. We live on a quarter of an acre. <laughs> oh, my God. Now, now, listen, when when your daughter's playing the piano, right? Yeah. 
are you conscious of the price of the piano she's playing while she's playing it? Oh, yes. Big time. Big time. I mean, there was another one. And here's the other thing, too. There was another one that was a little cheaper, and it sounded as good, but it was like a light brown. You know, like, like an old lady would play at a church. And this yeah, yeah, one yeah. is a Yamaha, and it's a upright, and it's black. It's like you'd see Billy Joel at a concert with and it was a little more. And we called our guy who was a technician at Fredonia. Piano, he, this guy loves pianos. He's a piano tech. And he goes, and I go, and Jackie's on the phone when we're in the store. And she goes, my daughter really loves the black one. And the guy goes, hey, listen, there's something to be said for inspiration. You know, you're a little kid. You're sitting at an old lady piano. Do you really want to play? You're sitting at a sleek black Yamaha that you know Billy Joel plays from the pictures. You know, it's that makes you want to play. And I was like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's all you had to hear is Billy Joel. I'm in. That's it, baby. That's <laughs> it. Let's do it. And he said, which is fascinating, he's like, listen, when you go there, you're going to see gorgeous pianos that are made in China. And he goes, but they're not good pianos, all right? They pretty them up, put nice, sleek wood on them, and they look so pretty, and you're going to want to, you know? And then we got there, and there was a couple, bro, they, like, hypnotize you. Like a deep cherry. I'm like, Jack, look at that one. And we're like, where's mm. it made? And the woman's like, China. And we're like, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't be pulled in. You know, nothing against Chinese, um, the country. I'm just saying they, that's what they do with the pianos. Yeah, so is Yamaha the piano to get? I mean, Yeah, they're made uh, in what? Japan. I mean, Steinway is like unbelievable. But, uh, you know, yeah. I mean, I ain't got that kind of. That's crazy. And, and again, you know, even what we paid, it's like if this kid doesn't want to play it, you know, it's annoying how much we spent. But the guy keeps going, you want to get a Yamaha, the tech guy. He goes, because, you know, you, the resale value, the resale. And I said to Jackie on the side, I, go, I don't give a shit about reselling my piano 10 years, or uh, 15 yeah. years from now, right? But, so, yeah, <clears throat> I think we got to Well, go. this, this is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing her learning to play, continuing to learn. And this is something that you gather around the piano. I'd see that like, she's 18 years old. Hey, everybody, come around the piano. Sadie's going to do some Christmas carol, you know, like Christmas songs. Oh, yeah. Oh, already she can do those. Already, I mean, she's doing, today she was doing, Morning has broken like the first, like Cat Stevens, man. She's really. All but, right, so then this is it. And then I see you sitting down next to her. With a little scotch on the, on the on the side, uh, and this is like you know, th this is like stuff movies are made out of. <laughs> well, this, listen, that's the fun part. But I'm like Jackie teaches her every day, right? And the and the woman gives you lessons to do with scales and songs. But once in a while, when Jackie's busy, I run the lesson. Like yesterday, I did, and she's doing a scale, and she's got to do this scale like for five minutes. So after two minutes of doing it, I can start hearing the note. I drop lyrics because I wanted to be a rock star. So I start going like, uh, it's a beautiful day. What are we doing? Huh? Say, say. Like that, something like that. And then oh, she lights up. She goes, Dad, let me, let me, let me. So then she ends up doing the scale another 10 minutes instead of three because she's making up music. And I'm like... I've shown her pictures of you. I go, that's my friend. Can you imagine you got your piano and all those people are there to see you and they like play your music. So I, I listen, I'm gone. Because here's the deal. I'm in the piano store, the place we bought it. And the guy who told me about how you can die if you burn the piano, he goes, <clears throat> you can dismantle them a proper way. And he goes, actually, Kelly over here, there was a woman who works there. And I had talked to her earlier, asked her if she could play piano, and she said no, but she has a music degree. She graduated from college on a music degree, but she can't play piano. Uh, she plays another instrument or something. He goes, Kelly takes the piano parts, and she makes really cool wall art with them that we all have for sale up there. And I look on their wall, and there's, like, piano keys that, like, are glued to a, a frame like a, that look like a flower. Bro, I said to Jackie that night, I go, this is my fear. She plays the piano, Sadie, for 18 years, goes to college for it, and then she's making fucking wall art out of the goddamn piano keys, <laughs> hoping that her husband doesn't dump her because she can't make a living. Oh, she be, And I don't want her to be a dueling piano on a fucking cruise ship either, you know? It's, it's Alicia Keys or bust. That's it. That's, That's it. 
this is almost like this is uh, kind of similar to what we were talking about last week with the with the sports. You know, like w- is it basketball or is it curling? Uh, I- in the piano world, you either got to be what a concert pianist. Yeah. Yo yo ma, bro. Yo yo ma. Or yeah, or or Lady Gaga type. After that, it goes to what weddings, and and, and uh, you're ahead at Christmas time. If you can do <laughs> jingle bells, don't spill the eggnog. Keep it off the piano. Yeah, that's it. I'm telling you. Or or you you're making a little side cash during the day while your husband's working, uh, teaching piano lessons. Oh uh, yeah, your husband comes yeah. home from a hard day of work and he's hearing fa la 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 in the other room from some kid down the block. He don't want it either. You know, so. So it's 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 not, I'm trying to get it to oh. really sing and sing out, you know. And I'm like, you have a good voice, you know. So that's that's the goal with that shit. Uh, yeah, take a picture of the piano and send it. Uh, I'd like to see that. Maybe we could post it up on our uh, our Pete and Sebastian show. How's your daughter? Uh, How's your son? Be- is everybody good? Because uh, I saw a photo the other day. Your daughter looks adorable, man. Are you guys? Uh, uh. I, 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 and your son, we, we haven't really chatted much about him since the kid was born. <laughs> then a pandemic kicked in. <laughs> we haven't really got into Caruso talk, man. Uh, yeah, no. Seraphine is doing preschool. You know, the private preschool with three uh, three other kids. It's on and off. One day here, one day at the uh, at the other kid's house. Uh, she's 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 three. And the teacher's saying probably by the end of the year she's going to be, you know, picking up on reading. And, of course, I got to ask, where are we? Like, when do kids start reading? Like, I don't know any of this stuff, mm-hmm. right? Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm new to this. Like, you could tell me a kid two and a half starts to read. I go, okay, it sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, right, same thing right? with me. You know, they'll go... He's da da da, and he's walking. And I'll, that's what I wanted to talk about. Did I witness Caruso's first steps in that video? No, it was a stand. It was a stand. Like he stood up. He didn't. He hasn't started moving yet. He took one step yesterday, but there hasn't been a, uh, you know, uh, a walking stint just yet. But I'm talking to Serafina's teacher, and I'm like, all right. So like, where are we on the spectrum when it comes to? Reading. When do kids start reading? She's like about five. Oh. So I, I'm thinking we get her reading by the end of the year. She's like gonna be what, what, three and a half. I'm going on four. If we get her reading, this is my fear though. I don't want her re- doing reading and doing math. Gets inserted into kindergarten and she's teaching the class. Right? That's I, I, I hear you. Either that or the teacher's like, Serafina, pay attention. And your daughter's like, I will when these fuckers catch up. Holy <laughs> shit. Can I get a book or something? I'm bored out of my mind. It's like Matt Damon and Goodwill Hunting. Do you have any idea how easy this shit is for me? <laughs> I hear you. You don't want to outpace the regular people. <laughs> But, uh, no, we've been having a good time. I took her to uh, In-N-Out Burger the other day, had a blast. I'm in the drive-thru, and I go, you got kitty meals. They're like, no, we got cheeseburger. So I get her a cheeseburger, french fries, and I got her a shake. And after the order, we start to move ahead, and she goes, Daddy? I go, yeah, what's going on? She goes, they don't have meals for cats? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, bro! Come on, man! Isn't that I mean, just what is that work? That's unbelievable, dude! Oh like, gosh! I mean, it was like, and again, you know, sometimes we talk about this pandemic and being, oh, it sucks. You can't work, you can't do that. But then you get a moment like that where that moment might have not happened because I was on a, doing a show That's or yeah. out of town and whatnot. So, yeah, it's it's unbelievable kind of like the progression and what she even like i'm sure you went through this like even sadie coming up with words and that you never you never even really say around her and like you're like how the hell did you yeah that's cool man that's cool the word cancel like how do you know the word cancel i never said that to you and so 
Yeah, it's been great. And Caruso, you know, he's coming out of his shell. He's, you know, uh, a year and a couple of months, and uh, he's uh, he just just finding his way. You know, it's like after a year, they start finally becoming aware, uh-huh. starting to throw in some words, starting to walk a little bit, stuff like that. So, yeah, everything's great here, man. We're just we're going to make this jailbreak to go see her family. I'm gonna be doing some golf. I've been uh, I'm gonna be golfing this Saturday with a couple of buddies here, um, and that's it, man. That's, what, that's where when I'm you, at. Jackie was asking me, I thought it was a good question. She goes, she goes, ask Sebastian this on the cast. She goes, is is your daughter yet getting to the age? Because obviously Sadie's at this age now. Where you start to see the personality and stuff. And I know you do, but have you yet seen where you start to see a trait? That like you don't particularly care for in a person, you know what I'm saying? Like like, to give you an example, the other day, uh, me Sadie and I were playing this game where I told her I'd go get her ice cream if she caught the ball, even though we're not going to get ice cream. She knows it too. So she catches the ball and she starts to go towards the car. She goes, "All right, let's go get ice cream." And I go, "Ha ha ha!" And then she keeps going towards the car. And then she goes to open the handle. Now, in my head, I'm going, oh, my God, are you one of those people that takes a joke too far? Oh, I can't fucking take those people. When the joke is over and they keep, they keep, you know, like I used to write with a writer in a room once where when he thought he said something funny, he'd pull away from the table. And then the oh, next, the next no. time he'd pull away and leave the room. Then the next time he pulled away, left the room, and I'm like, oh, my God, is he going to go outside and appear in the window? I was already <laughs> even laughing at the original pull-away guy. It doesn't get funnier the further away you fucking go. <laughs> so, so I was, uh, I'm, I'm looking, I'm like, I hope my daughter's not one of those people. So you start to see traits that you're like, oh, yeah. So, uh, I haven't seen it yet. Still young. I mean, yeah, she's three. The only thing that's a problem right now is sharing with her brother. She gets really, you know, kind of territorial with her things and whatnot. And he'll come over. He's a baby. He'll come yeah, over and just yeah. grab the thing right out of her hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she starts crying. But I do this move now. It's just, it's, it was, I, I, I have to, again, pat myself on the back here. She starts crying. I come in the room and I remove her from the situation. And we go on a, like a little walk as I'm carrying her. And she immediately right. stops crying, and I said, listen, you're the bigger sister, he's a baby, you have to set the example, and you have to share. Now go back in there, apologize to your brother, apologize to mommy, and and, and she goes, okay, daddy, I'll, sh- I'll share from now. Now, I don't know if she's doing it just to pacify me so she could go back and play, right. but I find that the removal of of the child from the situation like if they're crying yeah you get a, you get them away from that you do a sidebar right it's almost like it's almost like a trainer talking to a boxer during during, the, during in, <laughs> yeah yeah in between uh, rounds and then you send them off and 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 she's off and right i don't like the crying and and, and caruso's got this thing where if he don't get his way right away he's flailing and i tell everybody in the room don't pay attention to this just let him cry. Don't pacify him. If he wants to sit there and cry, let him stew in it, and then he'll like come it. out of it. I like so it. That's, uh, that's what's going on here with the discipline. Nice. Um, I had a couple over. I want to I wanna, I wanna pass this by. I had a couple over um, was it Friday, Saturday night. They come over maybe once every two or three weeks just for a social distance drink. These are the Detroit I, pizza people? They brought you the Detroit pizza? No, 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 no. This is okay. a different couple. Different couple. All right. So, uh, did I tell you about these pre-made drinks that I've been buying in the bottle? That they're like Manhattan's, Old Fashioned's, margaritas. You had them with the Detroit pizza. The guy, whoever you, right? That's, yeah, the guy who makes no. the pizzas, the homemade pizzas. He gives you the drinks with them already pre-made. That's the only talk I ever heard of pre-made drinks. Well, uh, I, I did it with uh, another couple that came over a few weeks back. But uh, anyway, I had these pre-mix, premix drinks, and then I was going to do steak and frites, steak and fries, for like a little sampler as we were, you know, like instead of getting a cheese plate, I figured let me put a little ribeye, some filet, 
do nice. my thing with that, and then uh, deep fry some French fries. You know, crispy little ketchup, little steak and fries, right? Nice. I got, I got to tell you, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to come o- to come over to my house for anything. Yeah. I cannot do it half-assed. It's either full bore or I don't bring anything out. I brought out, I mean, thinly cut, too, on the, on the ribeye with a little fork and a little tapas plate with a little bunch of french fry. And what I did, I put the, I put the ketchup in a ramekin so it doesn't bleed into the steak or the fry. You ever see that move where it, the ketchup is self-contained on the plate? Yeah, like in a little c- the ceramic thing, right? Yeah, just a little see-through yeah. bowl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just on the side. I've seen that in restaurants. I rarely see it in a home. Oh, you mean because as opposed to what? They squirt it right on the dish, you're saying? Yeah. Like if you got French fries. If you got French fries. Yeah. And a, and a hamburger. Well, you got that on right. each person's individual plate? Yeah. Oh, wow. No, no. Yeah, everyone puts it on their own individual plate. You give it everyone oh. their own ramekin? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, that's that's a nice touch. That's, that's well, nice. Be- <laughs> that's a- wow, man. Cause, well, number one, COVID, you don't want everybody dipping into the same ketchup, right? That's or- true. And then, and then uh, I would do that just because if you put it on the plate, it's going to bleed into the steak. I don't want ketchup on my steak. I don't know what the hell anybody else is doing, but ketchup and steak don't go in my book. You got, right. you got to. No, so, not a real delicious steak. I hear you. Wow. I, and, I, I listen. Uh, we were talking about it the other day, Jackie and I. I said, man. I go, we could have freaking, we would have had such a good time out there. I go, because now when this virus lifts, I go, everybody's going to be working like crazy anyway. So it's going to be so hard to get together with anybody, you know? Yeah, hopefully we can make this happen within the next nine to 12 months. (laughs) Yeah, no shit. No shit, man. So, uh, all right, bro. I got to get going. I hear Uh, you. You're doing a Jerry Lewis telethon over here, man. What do we got? Oh, yeah, we're good. We're good. So thank you again, once again, for everybody out there that tunes into this. Uh, man, I lost my train of thought. Tunes into the Pete and Sebastian show. We really appreciate the listenership. Share it with your family and friends. we got some new exciting things we're going to be doing uh, within the next couple of months here. So uh, stay tuned uh, for that. And uh, until next week, stay safe, stay happy. Take care. All right. Good hanging, bro. 